Well, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but if your name isn't Alex Brown, you didn't win the AOPA sweepstakes Grumman Tiger. Alex is based at Petaluma Airport in California. Now, we lured him out to his hangar with the ruse that we were going to interview him about backcountry flying. And then... Oh, hey. What's your name? I'm Alex Brown. Nice to meet you. Well, Alex Brown? Yeah. You know, nice airplane. Thank you. You own two of them, though. I do own two now. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> what? <laughs> no. Wow. I'm like blown away. Now you own three of them? I guess so. <laughs> oh, wow. Thank you. I this can't believe it. Uh, whoa. I'm like in shock. Well, congratulations. What? Thank you. Yeah. Whoa. You're the, you're the winner. I can't believe it. <laughs> this is like the first thing I've actually won. Well, Alex is planning to use the Tiger as a family traveling machine. He's been an AOPA member since he was 16. I would say that paid off. Now he'll be heading back to EAA Air Venture to pick up the keys to his new airplane. We're actually going to present it to him during our pilot town hall on Thursday at 11 a.m. So be sure to stop by our tent and be a part of that fun. Now, if you didn't win this year, don't lose hope. There's always the next week's sake's airplane, and I've got to tell you, this one coming up is going to be my all-time favorite. AOPA's Kayla McLeod Hunt introduces the 2023 sweepstakes airplane. Hey, Kayla here, and I am so excited to announce the 2023 AOPA sweepstakes aircraft, this 1953 Cessna 170B. Over the next year, AOPA will turn this stock 170 into a fire-breathing backcountry beast. The airplane will undergo an engine upgrade from 145 to 180 horsepower. But of course, no backcountry airplane would be complete without a set of big backcountry tires. The panel and interior are in pretty decent shape, but when we're done with it, everything you see will be brand new. The current exterior is pretty nice, but don't fall in love with it because this time next year, you won't recognize it with a brand new paint job. Good, everything's in the green and she's ready to fly. If you're not familiar with Cessna 170s, the first thing that you'll notice is how ineffective the rudder really is. It's a big round tail. It's a lot different than the Super Cubs, Carbon Cubs, and even the Cessna 180 I'm flying. So it took a little bit of getting used to. Since backcountry flying is all the rave right now, AOPA wanted it on the front. That's the exact reason why we chose this Cessna 170 as the 2023 sweepstakes aircraft. Now that we're up here cruising around a little bit, I wanted to show you all how smooth this airplane flies. It's a really great hands-off flyer. I've trimmed her out and she's on her way. It's been really special getting to learn how to fly this airplane out at the field where I learned to fly for the very first time in a 1946 Aronka Champ. I really wouldn't have it any other way. This field means so much to me and now this airplane does too. All right, well Kayla is joining me now. Kayla? I'm so excited. The cat's out of the bag. It's a Cessna 170, my favorite airplane. I also own a stock 1953 Cessna 170B, so thrilled for this project. Now, so far, you've pretty much been the exclusive one to fly the 170 because it was purchased down in your area, and it's been undergoing maintenance there. So tell me more. We saw a little in the video. What do you think about how it flies and, and the sweepstakes focusing on backcountry? Yeah, well, the 170 is an awesome airplane. It took a little bit of getting used to. I have the majority of my time in Super Cubs, Carbon Cubs, and that Cessna 180 I was talking about. So it performs a little bit differently. It's definitely a lot less powerful. Um, the rudder isn't as effective at the slower speeds, but it's still an all-around great airplane. I love how it flies. It's smooth. It's fun. And I can't wait to see all the process all the progress that we make over the next uh, couple months in the coming year 
And Kayla, we were talking the other day. I understand you've been getting a little bit of flack from 170 lovers over your comments on the rudder, right? Yeah, I've been getting a little bit of flack from the 170 community about the ineffective rudder that I talked about. Um, I wasn't specific enough, I guess, but um, yeah, it's really just, it, it takes some getting used to it, the slower speeds, especially taxi, takeoff, and landing, but it's a really great airplane, and I don't discount the airplane at all just because the rudder isn't exactly what I'm used to. <laughs> well, I tell you what, it took me a bit to get used to the groundwork with uh, with the rudder, and it's just with the 145 horsepower engine at those slow speeds, especially in the transition, bringing the tail up and down, or with a little bit of a, a crosswind, it can it can really catch that surface. Um, but the tail is it's one of my favorite parts of the airplane. It makes it so photogenic and beautiful. And I understand we're going to have a higher horsepower engine in it when we give it away. Yes, 180 horsepower. It's going to be a total backcountry beast. Yep, that's going to fix all those problems. You're going to have all that power and. <laughs> get right off the ground. My dad actually had a 180 horse 170 for a while and I loved flying that with him uh, out of the strip behind their house. That It really is a good performer. Now, Kayla, we debuted it on social media. How else can folks follow us along? So over this coming weekend, actually, the airplane will be making our way up to EAA AirVenture Oshkosh in Wisconsin. So if you want to stay up to date about on the trip up to Wisconsin, definitely follow us at Fly with AOPA on, AOPA on Instagram. That's where the bulk of the content is going to be coming from this weekend and all of our other social platforms as well. All right. Well, everybody, be sure if you're at AirVenture, come by the AOPA tent, get your picture taken with the 170, because who knows, it could be yours next year. Well, one of our major efforts at AOPA is to build the future pilot community. And one way we do this is through AOPA's You Can Fly High School STEM curriculum. The curriculum is free and it gives teachers access to lesson plans for aviation and STEM specific classes. There are more than 12,000 students in 44 states in all four high school grades, that is, using it. Now, the STEM curriculum is getting a boost thanks to Textron. At Textron, we're very excited to be part of the AOPA Foundation's You Can Fly program. Our company has a long history in general aviation with Cessna, Beechcraft, and Bell, and we're really excited about the opportunity to grow and expand the program at You Can Fly to touch even more high school students across our country. The materials on the You Can Fly program are absolutely brilliantly done. It's a great STEM foundation and particularly a way to get people passionate about our industry that we all love so much. We're excited to be part of the program and to expand this program and the reach to so many students. And so today we're announcing a million dollar gift that will help the program continue to grow and touch even more high school students across our country. That's right, a million dollars to support the curriculum. And thanks to the Textron family for being involved and supportive of this idea to bring youth excitement, and new people in the aviation. We couldn't do it without you. We look forward to working with you. Now, you can also help support the AOPA You Can Fly program with a gift to the AOPA Foundation. Find out how at the link there on your screen. A tragic mid-air collision at North Las Vegas Airport earlier this week. A Piper Malibu and a Cessna 172 collided on short final for runway 30 right. Four people died in the accident. Now, it appears that although the Malibu pilot acknowledged being cleared to land on the left runway, the pilot lined up for the right runway and came down on top of the Cessna. The Air Safety Institute just released an early analysis video about the crash, and they included some takeaway lessons for pilots. This may be a case which illustrates continuation bias. So continuation bias comes from two things. We as humans tend to see what we want to see and see what we expect to see. And so perhaps as the Malibu came into that continuous left-hand turn, even though it was repeated about the left runway, they expected and lined up on the right runway. Maybe. It's too early to determine. Or maybe some visual cues here on this particular sortie had them thinking they actually were lined up on the left runway. If we, take a look, if we take a look at wrong surface runway operations, one of the high causes of them is 
parallel runways and offset parallel runways like we see at North Las Vegas Airport. So one of the lessons that we GA pilots can take from this is understanding that when we come in to visual approaches or visual operations into parallel runways that are offset, there's a high potential for wrong surface operations. So confirming that we see both runways and that the runway we're lined up on is in fact the runway that we're cleared to land on. Adding some sort of confirmation in that will be time well spent for us GA pilots. You can find the full video in the Air Safety Institute YouTube channel. We'll be back in a moment. Your plane is a valuable tool. With the Genesis Aerosystems STEC 3100 Digital Autopilot, you can rest assured you will arrive safely to your destination. The 3100 is the industry's most advanced autopilot for single and twin engine aircraft, providing exceptional workload reduction, safety enhancing capabilities such as straight and level load and speed protection. To learn more, visit our website today. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty excited to go to AirVenture next week. I haven't been there for the last few years and I'm ready to be back. This year, one of the highlights is the 75th anniversary of the U.S. Air Force. Now, you also won't want to miss the daily afternoon air show or the night air show on Wednesday and Saturday. You can check out new airplanes in person like the Vans RV-15 that we're all so excited about. Also, the new AOPA Sweeps 170 will be at the AOPA campus. We're going to be in our usual spot by the Brown Arch. Now, also stop by the AOPA campus to say hi and learn more about our top advocacy issues. And as we mentioned earlier, we're going to have a pilot town hall on Thursday at 11 a.m. in our AOPA program pavilion. Stop by at that time so you can see Alex Brown get his hands on his new Tiger. Monday, check out a forum about getting the lead out of Avgas. It's a complex and critically important issue. The event will be in Forums Building 7 at 11.30. It has plenty of space for hundreds of pilots to attend. Now, Tom Haynes will be moderating a discussion with industry leaders as they give an update on the transition to unleaded fuel. And the General Aviation Mo Modifications, Inc., or GAMI, is one of the key players in the unleaded fuels effort. They're working on approval for their 100-octane unleaded fuel. And we recently got a behind-the-scenes look at the GAMI facility in Ada, Oklahoma, where they develop and test the fuel. Check out the full video on our YouTube channel. The local FBO where you buy fuel may have a new name soon. Atlantic Aviation and Ross Aviation just announced a business merger and acquisition. The newly combined company will operate under the Atlantic Aviation name. Atlantic now represents more than 100 FBO locations across North America. The announcement also included the acquisition of three former TAC Air facilities, one in Omaha, Nebraska, one in Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina, and the other in Hartford, Connecticut. Well, AOPA is just one of many aviation associations working to protect your freedom to fly. And now we have a new program to partner with other aviation associations. We're calling it the Alliance Program. It's designed to cross-promote groups that have mutually beneficial goals for the aviation community. Now, AOPA is introducing this initiative with the Antique Airplane Association, or AAA. Associations like AAA are a critical part of the general aviation fabric, but many pilots and aircraft owners just don't know about them. The AOPA Alliance program will support these organizations through a dedicated web page on AOPA.org and exposure in AOPA print, online, and video channels. The AOPA allied organizations will in turn educate their members about AOPA's missions and initiatives through their websites, channels, and events. So it's a win-win for everyone. Well, if you're interested in becoming a commercial airline pilot or charter pilot, you're probably working toward that magic number of 1,500 hours. That's the number of hours required to fly for an airline, and there are a lot of ways to build hours. Many pilots instruct. But this week on our YouTube channel, we have the story about a pilot in North Carolina who flies skydivers in a Cessna 182 on her way to the flight deck of an airliner. My name is Abby McCain and I'm a jump pilot. It's probably the most fun job I will ever have. 
The most rewarding part is um, helping people check these super big things off of their bucket list. It's super amazing to see the reactions and um, just the excitement that is brought to every single day. I think the most challenging part is just the, the go, go, go mindset, especially when the schedule is all filled up. You could be moving from sunrise to sunset, which can be quite difficult. I'm looking to maybe move on to some sort of multi-engine opportunity to finish my time building. Um, and once I have my ATP requirements, I'd love to look into a charter company or an airline um, opportunity. So we'll see. Well, Abby learned to fly jumpers at a school specializing in jump pilot training called Jumpers Away in Southport, North Carolina. You can find the full video on our YouTube channel. Well, that's all for this week. I hope to see you in Oshkosh next week. I'm Jeff Owen. I have about 1,300 hours. I have uh, rating single engine land, single engine sea, multi engine land, tailwheel endorsement. I'm halfway through my instrument rating, so my instructor is, uh, is walking me through icing, really important, obviously, winds aloft, um, some of the additional features. In fact, just a week ago, we paged through every button on the XM weather, serious XM weather. Uh, page just to find out what's out there. I was actually startled at how much I was missing. Well, I like that uh, it's accessible on the ground. It's great for flight planning, especially in a slower airplane, um, even in the air cam. Uh, just being able to access and plan on the ground before you take off is a big plus for me.